Hello, the internet Saffron here. I uh, was watching PlayStation Access the other day and they announced this game, A Summer with the Shiba in You, all right? And you play as a dog and apparently it's a mystery surrounding all these other sentient dogs or whatever. And I'm like, gosh, that looks like stupid fun. And that's my favorite kind of fun. <laughs> so like, I'm like, let's try it and see how it goes. <laughs> so yeah, so here we are, A Summer with the Shiba in You. And who doesn't like dogs? Come on. So here we have Sid. Say, Max, you really can't tell me where you're taking us? Nope, I can't tell you, it's a secret. This is my old friend, <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> this is my old friend, Max, who I haven't seen in years. Yesterday, he said he would take me to lunch and show me around the city. We're currently in the central zone of Tai Po, <laughs> the capital city of Shiba Island. A lot has changed since I moved away. Max moved here several years after I did, so I'm a little embarrassed that he's the one showing me around like I'm a tourist. <laughs> Tai Pa is as bustling as ever, with the Central Zone being one of its busiest areas. As Max guides us towards our unknown destination, dogs mill around the street. It's so busy on the street <laughs> it just slides right by. It's so busy on the street that it's hard to avoid pushing against other dogs as we walk. Huge digital si signs shine brightly, even in broad daylight. <laughs> and I love, like, I love Shiba Inus. They're really pretty. Um, but from what I understand, they're kind of hard to train and they're really like very family dogs. So if you're not in that family, they can be kind of iffy. And I'm not saying there's anything bad about Shiba Inus, but just like any dog breed, you should know what you're getting into. So <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, yep. Cute coffee shops, each with its own unique decor, catch my eye as well. One has lush vines creeping all over the storefront, leaving only a gap for the entrance. Ooh, pretty. Through the gap in the vines, I catch a glimpse of what looks like more plant life and thick tree stumps that serves as tables. <laughs> hey, that place seems really cool. Let's check it out sometime. Max pauses to take a look as I point to it. He cranes his neck to look inside. I've noticed it before too, on the way to work. I'd be happy to try it out. Neat. <laughs> a short walk later. After several turns, we stop in front of a building. The building is made of red brick with some steps leading up to it. Ta-da! I know it doesn't look like much out here, but the virtual tour looked great on Bark. <laughs> Instead of Yelp. I love it! Oh my gosh, I love it. Max approaches the door, but it doesn't open. He starts. Oh, he... Okay, that was an odd pause. He starts catching himself before he runs face first into the door. He nudges the door with his shoulder. It doesn't budge. The door's broken. No idea. Seems like an eclectic place. That's the reason I chose it. Maybe there's some secret password we need to enter? Can you look it up? Already on it. Max calls on his wrist phone menu. <laughs> Making some gestures in the air. His wrist phone menu. <laughs> I suppose, how does a dog get it on though? Like they don't ha they can't hold it. How does it <laughs> I suppose if it's elastic, they could just slide their paw in? Sure. <laughs> I love Max's shirt too, it's super cute. <laughs> All right, anyway, we need to figure this out. Some reviews allude to something interesting we need to do to enter, but they don't say outright what it is. What's the place called? It's just one letter, Q. Maybe it's closed today? I checked that it shouldn't be, and if they couldn't update their real-time schedule for some reason, that's really weird. Wait, what's that? Isn't that a doorknob? What? A doorknob? You mean, wait, I remember something. Oh, come on, it hasn't been that long. Why do I feel old because of the fact that I have seen... Oh, why do I feel old because of the fact that I've seen doorknobs before? I sit down before the protruding sphere and grip it with both my paws. I'm able to turn it without losing my balance. The door swings inward to reveal a staircase. Good thing knobs were phased out, though. Whoever invented these things clearly did not understand the anatomy of dogs. I was wondering why there'd be a doorknob in a world of dogs. It's precisely why many houses use them for rooms that puppies aren't allowed into. My parents used it for the pantry. I remember trying to bite the knob to get to the promised land of treats, but ended up with only a particularly sore jaw instead. <laughs> well, there we go. Aha! Uh -huh. I haven't seen these things since the AR... AR... Ina days? Ari... Arena? Our eyes meet and he looks away. Oh, I sad. Anyway, we're here. 
The stairs lead to an area with wooden floor paneling. There are rooms that have a raised base separated from the main area with sliding panels. The panels have some membrane-like material that is thin enough to let light through, but thick enough that we can't see into the rooms. Pa paper? <laughs> oh, a dog comes up to us in red traditional dress. It's fashioned with several layers, with a large golden button holding it up nearly over the dog's shoulder. Or nearly or neatly? What was that? Oh, it is neatly. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, I called earlier and made a reservation. He talks with the server and we are led to one of the rooms. I hoist myself up the ledge and make myself comfortable on one of the cushions along around a low wooden table in the center of the room. I'm sorry, I was having trouble reading because I was looking at I was looking at Sid laying there. I'm like, this is so cute. And the and the and the server looks like it's like a puppy. <laughs> The server gives us menus and leaves after a courteous bow. Take your time. I'm guessing you haven't had food like this since you left. Oh yeah, woof. I'd forgotten all about these. <laughs> Order anything you like. My treat. There are a lot of options. I flip through the tea menu. This place serves them with ancient methods, with multi-part clay apparatus that I never remembered the names of. It invokes the images of my parents pouring boiling water, steam shrouding their concentrated faces. There are lots of rules about how long to steep the tea and the order of pouring water in and out. I never really paid attention when I was a puppy, and after my parents' generation, it seemed like a lost art. If this place shows us the tea stepping process, I definitely won't let a second chance to learn about it pass by. Tea steeping problem. Mm. Isn't it interesting that they still use these books as menus? I remember they were pretty much phased out along with doorknobs. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things. Well, this place is known online for having that retro atmosphere, which is why they only take phone reservations. No in, no usual order screens, either. <laughs> I wonder if this used to be a human world. It's really interesting how fast things have changed on the island. They're both looking at me. H Hi. <laughs> okay, anyway. Though maybe that's just my perception because, first of all, I don't know what's supposed to be normal nowadays. What is it like where you're living? They're kind of at the stage like when I left here, actually. You saw my phone. They have similar levels of technology in Canada. Can canine da. <laughs> Though obviously, my Shiba Island phone doesn't work there, but I kept it in good condition, just in case I'd come back, you know. Ha, <laughs> you have a lot to see here then. Next time, I'll take you out to a regular restaurant and you'll get to see how fast everything is. The server returns and we order some owl, owl, owl long tea to share. I order some egg crepe rolls and, with ham and corn, and Max gets a century egg and pork con, congee. As we wait, I ask Max about some technological changes. He shows me how to set up custom gestures on my new wrist phone, but I still treat it with caution. Call it habit, but I'm hesitant to be gesturing in the air on such a large holographic interface. It serves my purposes to use the old touchscreens on a small phone. The hologram just seems overkill. Not to mention the companies that make these phones must be tracking so much information. They know what we read, who we call, where we are, what we buy. Somewhere, some team of data Shiba Shibas are making predictive models and segmentation analysis on this data. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, sorry, I spaced out. Were you saying something? <laughs> Getting confused by all this new tech? Maybe a little. Don't worry, it's a lot of information to take in. Here, try sending something to me like this. Bobork -bo talk test. A acid dog. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on! You couldn't have texted me something else. Pretend it's an actual conversation. You're in the same room. You <laughs> cry. <laughs> hey, let's take a selfie. Oh my god. Oh, this game cracks me up already. Zach shows me how to install new software and customize my interface. We hear the server slowly slide open the screen door, giving us enough time to swipe away our hologram phone screens. Two servers enter this time, carrying a tea making set. The set consists of a large hollow bottom panel with holes to let out steam from hot water. They begin the process of lining up various teacups on top of the panel stand. The dogs carefully place tea leaves in the pot. They aren't using any measuring instruments, but this practical way that, but the practical way they gather and sprinkle the leaves shows impressive muscle memory. With one fluid motion, they pour steaming water in each of the cups. As the tea is steeping, our food arrives. I take a moment to simply look fondly at the egg crepe rolls. The way steam rises from under the soft crepe skin, the smell of ham misting out towards me. 
It really has been so long. It's so weird that I used to eat this almost every day and now it's been years. I feel like I've gone back in time. Egg crepes are a simple dish, usually made in under two minutes by the breakfast stalls I use to frequent on the island. First, an egg is cracked and dropped onto the surface of a sizzling, sizzling metal plate. The cook then uses a metal spatula to smooth out the egg so that it is a thin liquid layer. When the egg is cooked around halfway, a thin crepe is laid on top of it and flips so that the egg layer is on top and the crepe on the sizzling plate. Then on top, the cook adds any other ingredients of choice, such as ham or corn. Once fully cooked, the entire crepe is quickly rolled up and cut into bite-sized portions with a spatula. Using the flat surface of the same spatula, the portions are then scooped up and swiftly placed onto a takeout box. Got that? Now you know how to make egg crepes. They just explained the whole thing to you. It's super easy. Hope you enjoy. You can try some of my kangi if you want. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Con it looks like kangi. It could be kanji if you have the whole gif jeff argument, but whatever. <laughs> I was feeling something light. During this time, the tea is ready as well, and I blow on the surface of my cup, creating ripples. My first sip is hesitant as I try to adjust the temperature. After a few sips, I can feel the strong tea aftertaste on my tongue. Ah, this is bliss. We chat more as we eat, and I ask him about the culinary norms, how the culinary norms have changed on the island. Apparently, most of the dishes I remember are still around. The largest change in, in cuisine is caused by the advancement in how food is produced. Max explains how nowadays a lot of ingredients can be produced synthetically, which reduces scarcity and seasonality. Oh, interesting. I was wondering, like, how, how are they getting all these? It is widely accepted that they are the same flavor and contain the same nutrients as naturally grown ingredients. I used to wonder why we have beef dishes on the island, but we've never seen an animal called a cow. I guess these synthetic flavors already existed 10 years ago since beef has been, has been around since before I was born. I just didn't know they were synthetic. I learned from Max that lately, there's been a rise in restaurants that offer wilder experimental foods with completely new synthetic inventions. Max showed me some pictures on his phone and we decide on a restaurant to try out next. He warns me that some flavors might really surprise me. Even dogs that try these things now and then have trouble getting used to some of the most outrageous invented... Even dogs that try these things now and then... Oh, no, okay. <laughs> I totally misread that. Okay, even dogs that try these things now and then have trouble getting used to some of the most outrageous invented flavors. I asked him to describe something he's tried before, but it was hard for him to convey it in terms of foods I know. For example, one tasted like cinnamon and cabbage flavor mixed, but that doesn't really describe it fully. I can only understand when I have the chance to try it, I suppose. We finish our food and reminisce a little more. However, there's one thing in our shared history we don't bring up. I get an uneasy feeling that I should wait a little longer for me to ease back into the culture of the island first. Max pays and we exit the restaurant. I'm quite full and nostalgic. And out they go. <laughs> we'll have a lot of time to do all these things, right? Back on the street is even busier than before, I, before we ate. It's the afternoon. Dogs probably don't have much to do but relax on the weekends. As before, the smell of all types of food waft onto our, out into the street and even in evening food stalls start being set up. Man, they just got done eating. They're talking about food again. Well, that's what I guess they are. They look much more modern and clean. From the crash course in tech that Max gave me, they probably have automated ordering and all that, but the street seating and rustic charm remain. We push past a particularly crowded part of the street and I feel a tap on my shoulder. I don't really think about it, as it was probably someone brushing past me with their backpack by accident or something. I continue walking when I feel it again. Eh, could also, could also be mistaking me for someone else. I turn around to check. Sid? <gasps> Exclamation points! Who are you? She has a smaller Shiva in you, but something tells me that she compensates for it with her attitude. Her gaze on me is steely, way too steely for comfort. It's concerning that she seems to have approached me with a purpose. Hopefully she really just recognized me by chance. You don't remember me? She scoffs, discontent written clearly in her expression. I'm not surprised, but I'm still disappointed. Now I have to waste time explaining things to you. Well, what's going on? Some random dog just came up to me. You're Moachi, right? I remember you. Oh, what? You? What are you here for? My business is with Sid, of course, not with you. But it's very interesting to know what you two are in, that you two are in touch. She jerks her head to the side. Let's go somewhere more secluded, shall we? I don't move. Well, if it's something important, why don't you message me? I'll give you my contact info. I'll convince you quickly and short. 
I'll convince you quickly. In short, anyone can now challenge you to an Ari Na. But I don't think many dogs know what you look like now. Only a pawful. If you don't come with me right now, I'll post your information online. I already filmed a video of you so everyone will know what you look like and sound like. That's impossible! Ugh, Sid, ignore her. Let's go. How do I respond? How do we respond? Wow, we actually have choices now. Um, I'm curious, but I don't think Max will be happy. Maybe Max will be willing to hear her out. So either way, it's you're going to be listening to this, Sheba. Uh, maybe Max will be willing to hear her out. Huh? It took me 21.77 seconds, slacker. Max, wait. I want to see what she has to say. Would you mind coming with me? He seems to be thinking over what the stranger just told me, as well as his response. If you don't want to come, that's fine. I'll meet you when I'm done. Okay, I'll come with you. I address the stranger. We'll go with you and hear you out, but convince me quickly. Tense walk later. And... We will see what it's all about next time. I'm going to end the episode here. <laughs> I, I love the game so far. You know, I'm not usually into these. I'm not sure how to put it. More dialogue driven. What What is term? What is term? I can't think of it. But basically, yeah, it's all just context. It's all just text. Text driven narratives. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so we'll end the episode here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, ring that bell, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all later.